Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we've got some tropical developments to check, the identification of a supernova impacting the Earth in the distant past, and the extinction risk of a magnetic pole shift like the one happening right now. But we're starting with the last 24 hours on our star and we find a relatively moderate day on the sun. There were a couple M-class solar flares. There are several filaments to watch, including a big one coming over the northeastern limb, top left. But we still haven't seen eruptive activity sending CMEs towards the Earth. As we mentioned yesterday, the coronal whole stream of the solar wind was to arrive and that has begun. Purple panel, we see the plasma speed currently surging to 700 kilometers per second, expected to endure throughout the day today. And we've already slipped into geomagnetic storm territory once, with more potential minor disruptions today. While those unfold, we'll also be monitoring the sunspots. We have a bit of growth in the northern active regions, but none of the groups have great size, and magnetic complexity is modest at worst, likely to be another calm to moderately active day. Going next to the tropics, we find twin systems in the northwest Pacific. One will hit northern Japan and the other bends into the Korean Peninsula. In the days ahead, we'll also be watching for development in the Gulf of America with an area placed on watch the last few hours as having potential development in the days ahead. Heading to the articles, good one here suggesting that an isotope spike from 10 million years ago was caused by a nearby supernova. Not only is this the prime candidate for these types of paleoisotope spikes, but tracing star clusters back over time reveals a 68% chance that a nova event happened within 100 parsecs of our solar system at that time. But we slide into the top story today with the story from the Weather Channel on the Tracer's mission heading up into space later this month. It'll be a new mission to monitor Earth's magnetic field. We'll be tracking both space weather effects and the changing field over time. We are in a magnetic pole shift right now, so missions like this are critical, and so is understanding the impacts of these events in the past. Like from this paper, big one from 2019, tying loss of major species over time to these magnetic pole shifts. Or like this one, which focuses on the specific effects of the Le Champ 2 event about 42,000 years ago, it was fairly devastating. Or this one out of the Oxford National Science Review, tying biosphere hits and extinctions to these magnetic pole shifts. Or we could look to the brand new one that came out this week. Looking back even further in time, they found no difference in the impact. Extinctions are tied to the low magnetic field strength during geomagnetic reversals the magnetic pole shifts. This is the topic and theme of not only this channel, but our documentary coming out this fall. It's sponsored by goldobservers.com, which is the best way to fill the gaps in your prepping of the precious metals nature. It's not only a store of value now and in the collapse, but gold is a fantastic reflector of electromagnetic radiation, and silver releases antimicrobial ions upon contact with blood. Our film will cover everything vital to know in this event and how to deal with it, and we thank goldobservers.com for helping us bring it to you later this year. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone. <laughs>